Iran Barkley didn't want to be a fighter, but he had a bully named The Bear, a big and fat 15-year-old who always made the 11-year-old Iran hand over his lunch money. Sick of being robbed by The Bear, he enlisted the help of his older sister Yvonne, who did the deed of beating the hell out of his tormentor and getting his money back, but his sister knew that she couldn't protect him forever. Already a professional boxer herself, she took Iran to the gym and said, I'll teach you to whip his butt or I'll whip yours. He quit boxing several times, but she always coaxed him back. She realized that in order for her little brother to not become a victim, to escape the drugs, gangs, and the projects, he had to forge himself into. Iran Barkley was born on May 6, 1960. His mother, Georgia, gave birth to him while visiting his father who was stationed at a military base overseas. My grandfather named me, Barkley said. He was looking through a book and there was Iran, and my mother said, okay. His parents separated and Barkley grew up in the Patterson Projects of the South Bronx. When he was 11 years old, he joined a street gang called the Black Spades. There were the Bachelors, Savage Skulls, Savage Nomads, and if you got caught in one of their blocks, you were finished, Barkley said. You were lucky if you got out of there if you didn't have a crew with you. Barkley remained in the Black Spades until his own gang turned on him and beat him up. After seeing multiple gang members stabbed and shot, he needed another outlet. His older sister Yvonne had taken up the sport of boxing and took Iran to the gym where she gave him lessons. By the age of 18, Barkley reached the finals of the New York City Golden Gloves before earning a spot on the United States boxing team. The sport opened up a new world for Barkley as he traveled to Italy and Germany for tournaments. He also earned money by working in a supermarket. I put the prices on food. I stack groceries, Barkley said. I hate it. I don't want to do it forever. Barkley dropped out of high school and eyed a career in boxing. Boxing makes me feel better, he said. I get to let it out. I get to show myself, show what I can do other than standing like a jerk in a white apron in a grocery store. When I'm training like that, I wonder if all these moments is worth it. You know, am I going to be someone? But then again, I think, well, I am going to be someone. I'm going to be the best. So this is why I'm doing it. So I'm training hard, sparring hard, and punching hard. And all I keep saying is I got to keep going. It's something there for me. Barkley turned pro in December of 1982. He married his girlfriend Pam, and the couple had one child and another on the way. He showed promise early, winning seven of his first eight fights, fighting six-rounders before being thrown into a ten-round bout against 22-fight veteran Robbie Sims, the half-brother of middleweight champion Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Good right hand got in by Robbie Sims. Robbie getting off very quickly as he has in other fights, but in the process he is trading punches a lot with Barkley, and that is something presumably might give him a problem. Oh, good exchange. Both fighters getting in. I think Sims got the better of it. They go again. Sims using the right, Barkley with the left. Sims is doing very well here, but he is trading a lot with Barkley, and I don't think that is what he had in mind. He told us today he wanted to box more. Sims has admitted that in previous fights, he uh, tends to get a little careless. And he did in that Teddy Mann fight, though he got off the canvas. He was down twice in the first round, got up and won it. Sims with great body work against Barkley. 
You know what I think happens to Sims is early in the fight he had some success as he did here against Barkley and then he gets a little wild and trades punches. That's what he's doing right now. Sims a great combination in there and Barkley answering back. Barkley hanging tough in there but I still feel that Sims is getting the better of it. Let's see. We're late in round one. Both fighters have landed very big shots here in this round, especially Sims. Good left by Sims. Barkley continues to fire. He has to back off a little bit. Good feet left by Robbie Sims. Big round for Robbie Sims. Great round number one. Now Barkley comes wading right back in. And Sims answers with a good right hand. Barkley keeps coming. That's what Sims needs to do, get off those ropes and get this fight in the center of the ring. That is where he wants it. Barkley got in a good left hand. That one, Sims ducked under. Wise move. Barini lost to Mike Tinley in a 10-round split decision. And then has come back with a win over Teddy Mann. Good combinations by Robbie Sims here as Barkley continues to press on. Sims' last fight was October 9th up in Portland, Maine against Charles the Wrecker Hecker. That was a good left by Barkley that stunned Robbie Sims, and Sims has to hold on. And as we mentioned, Sims has been known to go down. Final seconds of round two as Barkley comes on at the end of the round record of 30 and 4. Won a gold medal in the Empire Games in New York in 1981. Sims getting in a flurry with a good right hand. Barkley gets tagged with a right but keeps coming on. Barkley scores with a left hook. Barkley coming on here, landing the bigger punches. Robbie told us today he's worked hard on keeping his hands up, but he has not done that well with that in this fight. Chance has been down. He's been hit with hard like that. He's shaking up a bit. Barkley will win the battle of the sluggers if Sims stands and slugs. Robbie looks a little tired to me at this point. He's been on the line for Robbie Sims at this moment. And Barkley. Starting to get people to notice him. Can he keep up this kind of pace? He's never been more than six rounds. This is round three. Nice little flurry by Sims. Going that corner, and Barkley answers back with that left hook. A great snap. Less than half a minute to go in round three. Oh, good flurry by Sims. And Barkley staying right there. He's not moving out. He will not let Sims out of that corner. Finally, Joe O'Neill tries to lose. Barkley gets in the right hand. And again, Sims answers with a left. Boy, are they going back and forth. Barkley with a two-fisted attack. Comes to the end of round three. Wow. And he's strictly an arm puncher. Does not get his body into those shots. Barkley got in a good left hand. Boy, this has been some pace. Indeed, and as with all of Robbie's fights here in Atlantic City, tough to score. Here they go, back and forth. And Sims, of course, uh, has questioned a couple of the losing decisions that he's gotten here in Atlantic City. Again, Barkley getting the better of the exchanges. He rocks Sims with a right hand. with the big punches, Sims with the flurries. Round four. Number one contender. Again, flurries by Sims, but one big punch backs him off from Barkley. Barkley again. Sims just can't keep him off him. Sims throwing the flurries. Barkley landing the big punches. I thought Robbie Sims might be able to do a little bit more damage to Barkley than he has. And 
It's obvious that Barkley can take the best Sims is throwing. At least he has to this point. And if Robbie was boxing more and getting away from uh, Barkley's punches, that would be an important development. But Robbie, as you see, laying against the ropes, exchanging with Barkley. And getting Put the worst of the exchanges. Well, at least in terms of power, Robbie does look tired at this point. Still throwing punches, though. Midway through the fifth. He's landing on Barkley. Barkley with a big right hand. Sims is shaking up. Sims trying to fight him off. Sims fighting on guts alone here. They exchange again. Blood coming from the nose of Robbie Sims. Barkley lands with a left and a right. Sims straight lands. And again, a straight left and a right by Sims scores. Continue to go back and forth. The hand speed of Sims took over for a moment, but Barkley, when he lands the one big shot, can rock Robbie Sims. And Sims is hurt with a left hand. Barkley just coming on in, trying to finish Robbie Sims. Sims looking to hold on and backs off. Well, it's a tough round to score. Let me tell you, even though Barkley is hurt, Sims has landed a lot of punches. And Barkley is tiring. That left hand sent him back on his heel. Barkley loading up, trying to drop Sims. Unbelievable that they're still standing. And the leg, the foot speed of Sims, once an advantage is gone now. He can only stand there and exchange with Barkley. Sims is arm weary. He stumbles out of there. Sims needs a rest. He will get it in a few seconds. Barkley needs a rest as well. What a fifth round that was where there's a big edge for somebody because uh, a judge lights rounds, you know, a number of rounds that one fighter had. That's what happens in Robbie's fight. Good right hand by Robbie Sims. And another good right hook. And we start to think now that Barkley's never been past six, and his legs look wobbly. Yes, but he keeps coming. He is going out. And a right uppercut lands by Robbie Sims. Technique has very little to do right now with who will win this fight. Sims coming on here. Rock Barkley. Barkley is backing up for the first time. Sims with a right hand. Now it's Robbie Sims coming on. A straight left. Barkley looks very tired at this point. Barkley may be the one ready to go. Barkley said today, I want a box so I can conserve energy. Boy, he hasn't done that either, has he? Does Sims have enough left to take him out? Good left and a right by Sims. Midway through round six. Now it's Barkley showing the courage by hanging on and not going down. And Sims walked into a left hook from Barkley. That's something he's got to worry about even at this point as he attacks. I don't know if either man has much leg left. Sims dripping blood from the nose. He's still bouncing a little bit. Barkley is flat-footed and a little wobbly. Very little body work by either fighter in the last three or four rounds. Sims started out going for the body. Good right hook again by Robbie. And Barkley's ready to go. Barkley is wobbling. Barkley is down. Oh, the count is four. Barkley may not get up. Let's see. The count is seven. He is up. He is wobbly. Joe O'Neill stops it. What a performance by Robbie Sims. Barkley became a regular at the Resorts International in Atlantic City, becoming a fan favorite with his exciting fighting style. Ten months after the Sims bout, he took on the undefeated Eddie Hall. Uh, Hall used to help them out in, in, in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, where he's from, in their gym. And they, Giacchetti says he has a real sentimental feeling about him because these youngsters seem to grow up. Oh, good right hand. That, that one got to Iran Barkley a little bit. Barkley stepped back and almost didn't find enough canvas to step on as he almost went down, but caught his mouth on another right hand by Hall. Eddie Hall showing us a quick right hand. That's some great hand speed, Al. Sure does. I thought he would be moving a little bit more on Barkley, but he has said, hey, I'm going to stand in here and show you some power early. Usually be a main event somewhere, the way these two youngsters are continuing to climb up the ladder of the main event. But Robbie Sims and Mike Tiller. Good right. Barkley, Barkley with the right hand. Sims Hall Wheeling comes back with the left right combination. Now he goes downstairs. Whoa! Back with the left hand. Oh, what an exchange with these two middleweights. Vintage. Hall going after Barkley. Vintage Iran Barkley. He hurt Hall and then 
took a good shot himself. He comes back with the left hand. He's got Hall in trouble. Hall comes back with the left hand of his own. What an exchange here on this round. This is precisely what happened in the Barkley Sims fight. We're seeing it all over again against Eddie Hall. Deja vu. Barkley now stalking. Hall a little more wide eyed as he looks up. Neither man wants to go in at this point. They've both been stuck. It's stung badly. I moved back six inches from the other side. Closing seconds of a wild first round. Well, that's a way to get the fans up off the bottom side of their seats for sure, up on the edge of their chairs. And I don't think that left you see that kind of player work. Hall throwing the last punches of the end of round one. Making the right try to lead with the left of his own was Hall, but couldn't get either one of them in. I ran Barkley very tentative about throwing his uh, own jab, and the reason is that Hall is countering over it with his right. And here you see at Hall, a little more moving boxing than Hall. Hall dismissed the fact that he heard Barkley. Barkley comes in with a left right, but Hall countered it fairly well. Most of them caught by Barkley's shoulders. Two middleweights are sparing no energy at the moment here in the second round after just a fierce first round. When Ed Hall boxes within himself, he does well against Barkley. But when he starts throwing those wide looping shots to trade with Barkley, that's when he has trouble. As most fighters do when they trade with Iran Barkley, including Robbie Sims, uh, who, and you'll see evidence, a little bit of evidence of that in a piece on him later, though uh, in that one we concentrate more on what Robbie did, but Barkley hurt Robbie when they fought. So I have a feeling the power of Barkley will come through. I think in the fourth fight with you. Barkley keeping Hall against the ropes. Hall answered with a pretty good right to the midsection of Barkley that at least momentarily stopped his flailing away. See, Hall is all oh, big right hand by Barkley, and Hall's in trouble. And Barkley knows it. See, Hall is Hall is not boxing with Barkley, Sam. He is, he is slugging with him. That's why I really felt this fight would end before uh, a round or two was over, because Barkley just has too much power for Ed Hall. Looping right hand by Barkley. Barkley just starting to sit down on those punches now. He feels something here in the third round. But you know, here's where Barkley is dangerous to his opponent and to himself, because he, when he gets this way, he leaves himself open off and he gets hit and tags with punches, as he did in the, in the first round. So even though he's hurting Ed Hall, he's still vulnerable. Hall slipping for a moment. Oh, there it is. The left hook by Hall. Left hook. Another left hook. Barkley's in trouble now. Barkley now. Now Barkley comes back with a big right hand. These two middleweights have absolutely punished each other in the third round. Oh, you see a right hand by Hall as Barkley walked right into it. A right hand by Barkley on Hall's face. Technique has gone out the window now. Both these fighters have technique when they're fighting well. They don't have it now, but it is exciting. There's that left hand by Iran Barkley. Another left hand, but Hall's still trying to counter it. Barkley just loading up with the left hand on Eddie Hall, though. 30 seconds to go. This in the third round. Eddie Hall, by the way, has run right out of his left boxing shoe, by the way. It is split out badly on the left side, which will hamper his footing just a bit. Closing seconds of this, the third, and you can see what these middleweights have done. They are wide open. Both of them are wide open, but they're landing. And he threw some in on Barkley. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Start going for combinations. Put loading up on this guy. How you feel? Good. All right, all right, all right. You hurt you? How you feeling? Good. Okay. Has he hurt you? Nah. Okay, but now let me tell you something. You're carrying them hands, too low in the hand. You understand what I'm saying? Put them elbows in. Put them hands up. Right. Look through your hand, blade. Right. Into the back, you needed to box a little more. And indeed, here in the fourth round, he's doing. staying away from Rocky, but he's got him with a big right. Barkley wants to turn this into a brawl. There's that left hand now. again. Yes. <laughs> all kind of faded with the right hand and almost got caught with the left hand as Iran Barkley almost pulled the string. 
middleweights, Iran Barkley, along with Eddie Hall, as they fight just before our main event tonight. They're putting on quite a show at the Superstar Theater here in Atlantic City. Shot by Iran Barkley. Ford is playing Ford. And here comes Hall again. He's got Barkley in trouble. Now he can't get wild. See, he's getting wild. He's going to leave himself open. He did. He got caught with a left hand by Barkley. He should be jabbing and throwing the straight right hand. He's still may... punishing Barkley, though. Oh, but he took a big right. He may get Barkley out of it that way, but I don't know. I doubt it. I think he just leaves himself open when he gets wild like that. And he took a couple of good shots. The two middleweights exchange punches near the end of the fifth round. Schedule go eight. They continue with much punching to go with it, though. Strange. Well, they may want to lure Barkley in the end to that person to try and hit with the straight right. Ooh, the left took by Hall. You see Barkley, he's slipping those punches in of his own, and Hall. There's that left hook by Barkley, but he gets hit with one of his own from Hall. Now, Hall again is brawling with Barkley. And he does slug with Barkley very early in rounds one, two, and three. Again, has started to do a little bit more obvious movement and boxing in Barkley. Not to say that he has not been hit, as you see him exchange as well. Those are all combinations. Not all of them are on the money, but they are all getting some contact and hurting. Boy, you're right. Round seven, just like the, all the other odd rounds, is really... Uh, Halloween's over, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing else. Barkley now appears to have a cut over the right eye. Hall sees it and quickly goes with that left jab right to it. And I think that did come from the class of heads uh, when they were over on the far side of the ring. Oh, oh both exchange left oh, hook. Trouble. Big Barkley's trouble. in big trouble, but Hall is staggering as well. Both of them almost out on their feet now. And I think Hall is the one that's really in trouble because he's hanging on for dear life right now. And he's a couple punches away from being out of his fight. Barkley trying to tee off on Eddie Hall. Hall still caught a good punch on Barkley, but it is Hall that is now glassy-eyed of oh, sorts. They're bare both in trouble. You're right. Sir. I think it was an absolute exchange of left hooks that caught right on the button of both of them. And they're both tired. They're both in trouble. In this last, next, next to last round, Ed Hall's really wobbly ball. One minute to go in this seventh. Throw out the even rounds. Take the odd rounds. This has been a whale of a fight. They're both fatigued right now, and they're just wailing away. Either man can go. Paul really looks tired, though. You see him exchanging punches. Keep in mind, one of the judges did not show tonight. Oh, the referee, the ultimate, Tony Perez, is the third judge here tonight. Does, of course, do some judging in the New York area. It's obviously here in New Jersey as well, but again, he'll be called on, I'm sure, before this one could be over. Come up with a decision as we are closing in on the end of round seven. And they are both still standing, and that is news. The bombs have been thrown by both camps. The final decision still to come in the eighth and final round. A half a minute to go in the eighth and final round. Both fighters have just fought beautifully. In the Barkley's in trouble. He was hurt with that right hand. Barkley really staggered his hall, trying to unload in the final second. Oh, Barkley gets a right hand in on Hall. The judges ruled in favor of Eddie Hall. The fight was voted as one of ESPN's best of the year. Both fighters were giving a $500 bonus on top of their $2,000 purse for the fight. Now with three losses on his record, Barkley began campaigning at the Felt Forum in New York. He defeated Norberto Sabater, Randy Smith, Carlos Betancourt, and Bill Lee before facing former title challenger Wilfred Scipion. In facing Scipion, Barkley did away with his usual slugging style and instead outboxed the veteran from the outside before knocking him out in the eighth round. That's called the element of surprise, Barkley said. They said he was on his way out. I showed him the door. The most impressed spectator was the referee, Vinnie Ferguson. After counting Scipion out, he gave up officiating and became Barkley's co-manager along with John Reitz. 
A month later, Barkley won a disputed decision over Mike Tinley, but continued his undefeated streak at the Forum. In October of 1986, he received his biggest opportunity, coming in as a substitute against James Kinchin, the number two ranked middleweight contender. Barkley overpowered Kinchin, shaking him with big left hooks and knocking him down in the ninth round, securing a decision victory. A year later, Barkley contested for the vacant WBA middleweight title, going up against Sumbu Kalimbe. Strangely, Barkley weighed in at only 153 pounds at the weigh-in and was told he had to gain at least another pound. He had a quick snack and weighed in at 154 on his second attempt. Barkley started strong in the bout but complained that the ring canvas was too slippery. He tired by the championship rounds and lost a unanimous decision. Kalimbe had opened a cut over his left eyebrow, a scar that never healed and continued to trouble him for the rest of his career. Barkley regrouped and returned to the felt forum to face the popular Michael the Silk Elagide in a bout televised by NBC. Not a New Yorker. He's from Canada. I own New York. This is my city, my town, and I'm running him out. I'm tired of everybody talking about he's a New Yorker. I'm the baddest, meanest New Yorker here in the middleweight division. And ain't nobody going to stop me unless they kill me. And I'm not ready to die. Over Sandalon Williams in Atlantic City. That's a slip. Lajanay lost his balance. Lajanay just too jittery right now. Can't even get his legs straight under him. He's got to get some of this ring anxiety off of him right now. He's fighting scared right now. And that's not good for Elijah Day, but very good for Iran Barton. Coming up on 10 seconds remaining in this first round, and a very sharp round for Barkley. We'll be back after these messages. Sumbu Kalimbe. Barkley says you can call this a make or break fight. He says it's going to make me and break him. And Elijah Day took the left hand, again lost his balance. Strong right hand by Aram Barkley, driving him into the ropes. Elijah Day getting out of there. Barkley's biggest wins, he stopped Wilfred Sippy on an eight. Took a 10 round decision over James Kitchen. In fact, put James Kitchen down. And that, well, that stiff jab and the scowl on his face. And continues that brawling, aggressive style. Boy, if he is not uh, hurting Elijah Day, he is at the very least intimidating him. The look on Elijah Day's face as Iran Barkley comes on with a scowl is something to see. Oh! Put down, he's been down a couple of times, put down by Tate, and then early in his career, Roosevelt Green sent it to the canvas, but Elijah Day came back, did not clean out. That surprised Elijah Day. And here comes Barkley after putting Elijah Day down in the second round, 35 seconds to go on the round. said keep the punches up that gave him time that may be all he needed he's not in trouble or the silk is not in trouble final seconds second round so elijah day will last the round iran barkley has been out jabbing elijah day elijah day must now pick up his jab and his superiority and speed that's what his father is telling him you're the boxer don't try to punch with this guy the uppercut. Now he's in trouble. He, now his legs in a, a motion. He's got a long way to go. Big trouble for Elijah Day now. He's got to hold on. Today for letting it all lay out. 
He knows he's got him if he wants him. Iran smiling. Down to 25 seconds to go on the round. But Barkley comes back. Another good left hook by Elijah Day. Final seconds of round four. And Barkley able to rally. He was hurt. Elijah Day again able to connect as the crowd responds. The guy's hurt. We're trying to kill him. Cut him up. He, he, he's got 10 rounds to go. You know what on him? You have it? You have it? Look to pick it up. Barkley smiled at him. And Barkley then came on. On to round five. And if you want to get crazy, try to explain the scoring in this town. And here comes Barkley. Elijah, they try to find his legs. Elijah Day is really hurt. We are early in the round. Referee Mercanti try to decide whether to step in. Elijah Day cannot get away. That was a desperation attack. This one is over. If Barkley would settle down, the referee would stop it. Barkley throwing everything at Elijah Day. And now it has stopped. It is all over, officially. In a wild one here at the Felt Four at Madison Square Garden. In round number five. Iran, you said in the dressing room Hart was going to win this. Hart won this? Well, first I want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But what, hundred, what, what, what worked for me was hard work and good heart that I have. You know, working hard and my trainer Al pushing me and working with me hard. But I knew that I could beat him. Did you think you had him in the second round when he was wobbling all over the place? Yeah, I felt I had him, you know. I said, it's just a matter of time. I just got to just pace myself. But Don't then, get wild. But then game that shock. You got oh, yeah. You win now. Oh, yeah. Well, it was the shot that came, but it didn't really hurt me. It was just more a surprising shot, you know. You, came, you got him so fast at the beginning of that fifth round that hardly anybody saw that punch. What was that? It was the left hook. <laughs> Did you put everything into it? Oh, yeah. I knew I could catch him with it. I, I was going to feign him. I said, let me get on my toes and just feign him and just shoot the left hook real quick. He won't even know it's coming. And that's what I did. That's what we worked on in the gym, and that's what I knew I could beat him with. All right, this is Al Bolden, the manager. You have to be very happy. What's in store for this young man now? Well, the manager got to say, take care of that Stan Hoffman and his manager. I just want a young man to come back and get the gym and go back to work. He got a lot of talent. People gave up on him. And he's, not me. And he's I got fight one time, and I said, this kid got something. He got heart. And if you give him the other things that you need, he'll be champion. That's what he's got heart. Thank you very much. Back to Marv Albert at ringside. The victory earned Barkley another shot at the title. This time he challenged Thomas Hitman Hearns for the WBC middleweight belt. Barkley came into the bout as a 4-1 to underdog, as the legendary Hearns had only lost twice in his career to Sugar Ray Leonard and Marvelous Marvin Hagler. The two good fighters he's fought, he didn't beat, Barkley said. I'm the third one. In the gym, he had Tommy with a lot of lateral movement and a lot of good stiff left jabs. All right, here we go. Round one scheduled for 12. The Hitman with that rare commodity, one punch knockout power. Well, he can sure throw that right hand right down the pipe if the opportunity presents itself. No question about that. 25 of his 38 KOs within the first three rounds in his illustrious career. And Barkley is not a very hard guy to hit. But he does take a good punch, and he's a real tough guy. Punches and accepts punches at a furious pace. A 
Big left by Hurd. Trying to finish him off early. I'll tell you, Iran Barkley was able to get one left hand in there, and boy, that's his plan. Can he weather? Can he get through this kind of power to do it, though? But he has to look at the guy he's fighting. Yeah. He's looking at the floor and throwing punches. That's not too healthy. <laughs> no. Burns with that devastating right and awesome punching power. Best weapon for Barkley, the left hook. You know, with Tommy Hearns, if I if I worked with uh, Iran Barkley, I would... The famous right hand of Thomas Hearns and then nail him with his left. The right was blocked. All right. right by Hearns is blocked. And you saw, you saw Barkley punch back. I have to tell you, I don't think Tommy Hearns looks as sharp early as we've seen him in recent fights. He's throwing his punches with not the same leverage. He may knock Barkley out, but right now, he's not throwing his punches with the leverage he has in earlier in early in other fights recently. Well, that's right, because he nailed Barkley, and Barkley, he didn't knock Barkley off balance, and Barkley was able to wing right back. We go to the Barkley corner. They put the stool in, and they were nervous, and Barkley almost missed the stool. Bad one. Luckily, they have Eddie Aliano, who is one of the best cut men in boxing, working on that cut. And right breath. off the bat, Eddie is pressed into service. Keep your hands up, man. I'm doing, baby. You're doing pretty fast, but keep your hands up. Okay? Keep them hands up and keep working the punches down. Get settled down. Don't be trying to reach my hand. Oh, hold out of my eye. There's some more. There's some more. There's some more. Okay? Give some grease. Come on now, keep your hands up, big fella. I got him up, right? Okay. Yeah, pretty good. Keep your hands up, work with it, see? Okay. Well, Tommy Hearns has a good right, but don't forget his left hand. There's the hook. Slapped a little bit with it, but it got the attention of Iran Barkley. Round two is scheduled for 12, the WBC Middleweight Championship. Thomas Hitman Hearns in the gold. Iran the blade, Barkley in the black with the red trim. Cut over the left eye of Barkley. There's that right by Thomas Hearn. Good stiff right hand by Tommy Hearns, but it didn't move Barkley at all. Depending on how he had to lose that weight, it could harm him. Good left hit hook by Iran Barkley. Double left hook. When he goes with the box to the body and the head with that double left. He can be very dangerous. I personally think Barkley's defense a little better than I anticipated it being early in this fight. Absolutely, but now, Al, he's bleeding from the mouth. Coming up to a minute remaining, round two. Barkley has to be a, a bit confident right now, but it could be full. Very, very angry again. Final seconds, round two. They're yelling right hand from the corner of Hearns. A right cross to finish the round by Thomas Hearns. They'll follow Iran Barkley. Keep them hanging, man. You got to go ahead this guy now. And give him two minutes respect Eddie, now. Uh, Eliano, Eliano, right there. Go in behind the jet. Go in behind the jet. And here comes yeah. Dr. Yeah. Romeo okay. up in the ring to look at that eye. eye. And Dr. Around, Romeo is a skilled eye. professional. He doesn't panic. Right. He's not going to stop the fight unless okay. it's absolutely yeah. necessary. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You got to go in behind the jab and try to get him to exchange it. He's picking the piece outside. You can't block okay. with it. Okay? Let's fight the motherfucker. And round three scheduled for 12. And Barkley comes out, smoking. Burns retaliates. And this is Barkley's brawling style. He learned this apparently from watching the tapes of Juan Roldan against Hearns. He's getting very low and getting under the jab in the right hand. Well, it took one big left hook by Roldan. If he would have landed another one, it would have been a different result. He had Tommy in real bad trouble. Left by Hearns just missed Barkley's head. Well, Elijah Day hurt Barkley and put him down with a left hook. And the time he saw those, that in the films, but he has not been able to get his own in as much as he'd like. And the eye is open again. Barkley's left eye is open. Plenty of time left in the round. 
Give him a little low. That one straight to the body by Hearns. Great body shots by Tommy Hearns. Well, that's the way he was working in the gym, Al. Good jab, good jab, set it up, hook to the body. And there it is again. Emmanuel Stewart, within inches to our left, loved it. Those body shots have hurt Iran Barkley very badly. The crowd sensing something. Burns continues to go to the body with a left uppercut. Barkley's punches have slowed up a great deal. Keep him downstairs, the words from the Hearns corner. This is very much, I think, like what Don, Tommy Hearns did to James Schuler because everything in that fight flowed off the left hook to the body, and that's what's happening tonight. It's a miracle. He's on his knees. He gets up. Just before being counted out, he gets up. Unbelievable. Seems to me that was a long count. I don't know. Can he survive the third round? Wow. Richard Steele steps in. Hurd goes through the ropes. What a turnaround. It's over. Iran Barkley has upset Thomas Hurd here in the third round. And here's the new WBC middleweight champion. After Hearns all but crippled him with left hooks to the body, right. Iran was leaning, practically ready to go down, and, and a right hand did it. And a punch before that, Al, the two punches that Iran threw before that, no snap, no steam, all of a sudden, there it was. Goes to show you, in boxing, anything can happen. There's Al Bolden. Iran, you were confident. What about those body shots? How hurt were you when you got hit with those body shots? Well, first, first of all, I'd like to thank my Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, for giving me the victory. Oh, yes, I do. But second now, Thomas, the body shots wasn't effective because my, my body was in tremendous shape. Um, so you weren't hurting that round with body shots? No, no, I was, I was sucking up the wind. He, he threw some good body shots. But um, I just want to also say, man, Tommy was a great fighter, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm thanking him for giving me a chance to fight him a great champion like him, a and a, a legend, a great legend. And uh, he gave me an opportunity when he didn't have to, and I, I thank him. I you're, thank a him. you're a gracious winner, that's for sure. Now, they, the cut over the left eye had an impact. Did that make you really go after him more? Yeah. Well, yeah, it made me go more because my, 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 my trainer here, Al, said, look, baby, don't stand there and box with him. You're picking him apart. He said, go ahead and fight with him, and uh, you could you come out, you know? I just wanted to get a couple of more rounds before I could get him, you know. But um, were you surprised that you did get to him so early? No, I wasn't surprised. It was just that I felt that I was going to get to him as soon as I just take my time. He told me to take my time, and I was listening. I didn't care about the cuts because I didn't have time to bleed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, well, I know I'm going to win this fight, but I got to keep going. He, he hit me with some good shots. But Tommy's a, a great, a great, tremendous champ. He was, and uh, yeah, we're the champ. I just, I just, I just wanted to thank the Lord, man, for giving me this chance, and He gave me a shot when He didn't have to, and I just thank Him. Congratulations, Iran! A wonderful win. Thank you. All right, Iran Barkley with a surprising to some, I guess not to him, win. Amazing performance. Let's go back to Steve at ringside. The victory was bittersweet, as one of Barkley's best friends, former WBA junior middleweight champion Davy Moore had been killed in a freak auto accident a few days before the fight. We traveled everywhere together, Barkley said. He was like a brother. Barkley earned $350,000 for the bout and expected more riches to follow after the stunning upset. In my mind, it was like, this is over, you have the title, Barkley said. Now you're going to fight Leonard, Duran, Hagler. You're there with the fellas now. Hagler and Leonard remained out of Barkley's reach, but Roberto Duran answered the call. Barkley welcomed the match wanting revenge against Duran for brutalizing his friend and sparring partner, Davy Moore. Duran didn't kill Davy, Barkley said, but he killed Davy's spirit. He fought him dirty, and I plan to make him pay for it. Barkley, the 28-year-old from the Bronx, who beat Thomas, oh, big right hand, staggers Barkley, Barkley is hurt. hurt. 
He is hurt, no question about that. We mentioned the fact that Duran has not shown punching powers in middleweight, and there it was. A big right hand by Roberto Duran brings most of this crowd to its feet. Al Bowman will try and offer some words of encouragement to Duran Barkley. Keep that left hand up. Keep boxing. Keep boxing. You don't try to run in now. You better get that stuff loaded up now. Take your time. Go on, Duran. Get the jab. The jab is what you want to do. Slow it down. Okay? Get the jab working. Stay with it. Slow it down a little bit. Because he ain't doing that. Here it is. Right hand, slips the punch. Right hand bite over right that left hand of Barkley. What a beautiful move. That's what we said he has to do. He has to make Barkley miss and then count the punch. How many reincarnations can this man have as a pro? And are we seeing another one tonight? It's too early to tell, especially against Iran Barkley. We've seen him get off the deck to beat people. And you know what? Iran Barkley doing a better job of covering up on the inside than some people are used to seeing from him his strength to push Duran back. Excellent uppercut by Barkley. Overhand right, but the left hook gets there by Duran. And a right hand by Roberto. Took a lot of body punishment this round, though, Al. It's been a good round for Barkley to this point, though Duran is landing his share also right now. Barkley slips the right hand. Duran's mouth is now wide open. It's it is only the second round now. It is scheduled for 12, but at this pace, could it go that long? Joe Cortez looking very carefully in to make sure. Well, that was and you can also watch Barkley do a stutter step with his feet. He's fainting with his feet. There's that right hand again. But Barkley answered with a good short left. Barkley's been on the mat before. Michael Lajade had him there. He lost to Robbie Sims by knockout in a wild affair. And Hearn certainly punished him, but he comes back when he's hurt. And you see it here. And you know, you mentioned Robbie Sims. I did the fight with uh, Duran and uh, Robbie Sims, and a split decision. It was just such a tough fight uh, for Duran to lose. Interestingly, that is their common opponent, and uh, they both lost to Robbie Sims, even though Robbie has never found his way to a world title. Boxer Sambu Kalabai thwarted his efforts to win a title before. Body shots again by Barkley. But right now, the body work, as you said, of Barkley, a real important weapon. That right did not even stop Duran. It landed perfectly. The real power of Barkley is probably in his left hook, although Tommy Hearns was nailed with a big right. Round three just about over. It's been an excellent round for Iran Barkley. Counter right over a lazy jab by Barkley, but he smiles at Roberto Duran. Some gamesmanship from the champion from South Bronx. Duran is going to have to use that right hand a little more. Let's go, Let's go. Let's go. Barkley pushing him off. Oh, my. Combinations on the inside by both men. The right hand again. Right hand again, and Barkley, Barkley wobbled a little bit then. That right hand hurt Iran Barkley, but when you hurt him, he seems to be more dangerous. It's been his track record. What a war. Uppercut on the inside by Barkley. Those are those short little combinations that Duran has to throw, but then he has to spin out and get out of there. He can't wait for the receipt. Iran Barkley has followed his game plan perfectly, and yet Duran, very competitive because he's so clever, throwing those counter right hands. We talked about the cuts, nothing like that developing over the eyes of Iran Barkley. He's got to be very heartened by that at this point. Well, I wouldn't like to see either fighter get cut, Al. No, and it, it's very good because there was the concern over Barkley cutting. Al, this could be the round. It could be the big turning point for the fight because they're just staying there. Mano y mano, I guess. Huh? Oh, what a right hand. by Duran. They are both landing big shots. Who will go? Duran is now stunned.
Don't miss him to turn around because he will hit you behind the head. Okay? Keep working the jab inside. Shoot that punch okay. to the body and bring up to the chest. Okay, take a deep breath. How you feel? Feel good, baby. You work it, you work it. Ironically, Barkley is probably following their game plan to a T, and yet Duran is still there. I'm sure they thought if he did all this, Duran would fold. We're in round five, and it's been fought at a torrid pace right from the first round. Duran going to the body. As we conclude round five again, the crowd picks up the chant of Duran's name. Big right by Duran. Another one goes in the books, and I mean an outstanding round. Keep the jab moving inside. You got me? Come on. Come on. Got him. There may be a cut over one of Iran Barkley's eyes. We'll take a peek and see okay. if we can find it. Yes, Ed Aliano, very fine cut himself. man, will work on it. Get back in the fight. Okay. Come on, you got to keep working with that jab now. Work that jab and work that body. Don't let him rest. Don't let him rest. Don't set up that pose with him. Keep popping it. Okay. You know what? One, one, one. One, one, back. One, one, back. Okay? Take a deep breath. Come on now. You can't sit down there and go to sleep and let him get back in the ball game. Okay? You got to keep working him. Keep that pressure. I want to fight. Go to the belts for you. Okay? You got to keep working him, though. You got me? Okay, bro. Okay. Come on now. Take a deep breath. Let's go. Go back with that jab. Come on. And, and now Duran pushing his punches a little bit. Barkley digging to the body as he has been throughout this bout. That'll do it for round six. He's known as one of the best cut men in the business. Percy Richardson, one of the other great cut men also here tonight, working with some of the Olympians. He did a good job of closing it. Round seven action, set for 12. The WBC middleweight championship. The champion, Iran Barkley, really left to fight Roberto Duran. Duran landing on the inside, so is Barkley. They took a little time off in the sixth, although Barkley certainly didn't. Duran came out hard here in the seventh. Could this be his last stand in this bout? Come on, talk a little so smart, though, inside. Barkley just fires, but Duran knows what he's doing. He moves around. What a hook by Barkley. And a good right hand by Duran. The fact that Barkley is cranking up those hooks and landing like that, and Duran is not being staggered on, really is amazing. Well, as I say, this may wind up being the guy who can catch better. The crowd starts to chant again. Even if it's not a home crowd for Duran when it starts, like Ali and some of the other greats like Sugar Ray Leonard, it always ends up being a home crowd for him. Barkley using the uppercut, that's been a real good weapon for him. Duran slipped six consecutive punches that time. Just what beautiful boxing. He's a master of defense, that's always been one of his trademarks. Excellent right hand. That one stunned Barkley, I think. Barkley answered with a vicious left hook to the body, and Duran came back. He's nailing Barkley with some big punches now, Al. What an uppercut by Barkley after Duran hit him with big shots. Nothing is phasing Roberto Duran. What a double left hook by Barkley. Duran holding on. He's hurt, Al. That First left time in the fight, right. he's really hurt. He's blowing now, Barkley. Why not? Oh, right hand again by Duran over a very lazy jab by Barkley. Nothing comes easy to Iran Barkley, and it's not coming easy tonight. Right misses by Barkley. Hooks by Barkley, two to the body and one to the head, and Duran still responds. They stare at each other after the seventh round. Good thing for him it has, because otherwise he would have been getting hit with a lot more. Good short left hook by Barkley. Oh, that hurt him. Duran in trouble from the left hook. Everything but his heart is in trouble, Al. Look at, look at this Duran fire back. Can Barkley take him out? Duran doing a wonderful job of tying him up on the inside and slipping punches and landing his own uppercut. He's 
so smart, Al. He knows in the, no, he, inside, he's protecting himself, relaxing, trying to he, clear his head. If there is a smarter fighter around than Roberto Duran, it would be unlikely. The Barkley left hook has been such a good weapon the last two rounds, and that one really stunned Duran. But Roberto is surviving so far. You know, I, I just never count the Roberto Duran out, but it looks to me like he's pushing his punches now, Al. He's lost something, that's for sure. Again, the hook by Barkley. But a nice move before the hook. Stepped over to the right, came back with the hook. Barkley's shown, shown me a lot of improvement as a fighter tonight. Win or lose. Perhaps Iran Barkley's best effort he could make the case. I would absolutely have to say so. Against an obviously rejuvenated Duran. And Barkley made Duran miss that time and then nailed Duran with the left hook. Duran is starting to push his punches a little bit now. But they are landing. Again, the body work by Barkley. And uppercut. He's shown us almost every punch in his arsenal tonight. And still, Duran will not fall. It doesn't get better than this. Work it. Keep working. Keep shooting that punch. You shout them up. See, when you duck under, bring them hands high. You try to hit the hook to the head, duck right under, bring the shoulder up. Up a cut right up on the knee. You're doing great. These people selected. Yes, amazingly so. Good right by Duran. There's not as much snap on Duran's punch now, though, Al. You're right, he's pushing it more. Halfway through the ninth round, scheduled for 10. Right hand by Barkley, but Duran comes with his own left hook. Come on, work out of there. Come on, work out of there. Just get the sense of the head. Duran can take a better punch right at this moment in the fight than Iran Barkley. If Duran land, landed a big clean punch, I think it would have a big effect right, on Iran right, because right, he's tired. Good yeah, work. Good straight right hand. Barkley backs up and takes a right hand. He may be in a little bit of trouble. Well, you can see he's really, I mean, he's, he's composed, but he's, he's tired, no question. I mean, he should be. And he goes to the body again. I am amazed that in this ninth round, Duran has taken the body punishment he's taken, and he's still there. You know, you see these kids fight the amateurs. They fight three rounds, and they train hard, and they get tired. The reason that Duran is able to do what he's doing, he's so relaxed in the ring. He's so comfortable in there. Half a minute left to go in this ninth round. A strange footnote to this fight is it's only the second time in his long pro career that Roberto Duran has fought in Atlantic City. Alien territory to him, but he's still got his fans, as you've heard throughout this bout. And they came through the snowstorm to be here. I bet you they did, to fill this arena. Round nine is ending, perhaps Duran's best round in the last five or six. But the difference here is that Barkley has done much better work in this bout. That is probably ahead, but it could be academic the way they're wailing away. It almost looks as if Roberto Duran has got a second or third win. Where he got it from, I don't know. I haven't a clue. <laughs> With the punishment he's taking fights, now Duran getting it cranked up. There's that right hand. And another one on the left hook. And when he does that, Barkley reverts to his old form and wails away, which makes him even more susceptible to get hit with the counterpunch. It's been a good 10th round for Duran. He cannot be underestimated, even at 37. I guess he's proven that to He's proven to me again that he's one of the greatest fighters that ever lived. Barkley and then landed an overhand right. Good right hand on the inside by Duran. It's been a remarkably clean fight from Duran. No headbutting, no elbows. But Big boy, right hand by right. Duran again. Right, break out, break out, break out. There have been those, and round 10, a huge round for Duran. Again, the body work of Barkley. The low blow by Duran. Round 10, a big one for the hands of stone. You heavy? Come on now, let's go to work. Second up. Let's go. 
You hear me? Let's go. You got to win the next two rounds, baby. You got to get inside and stay inside with this guy. Put on tape on the glove here. Put on tape on the glove. Yeah. A tired Iran Barkley. And they go. Good hook downstairs by Barkley and the jab. But nothing is phasing Duran right now. Except that Barkley is scoring in this yes. round. Huh? Hasn't been a bad round for Iran. We're halfway through. Who will win the second part of this round? There's Duran setting to throw that right hand. I can see it from here. He's looking for the lazy jab of Barkley. They trade hooks. Showing signs of weariness. No question about that. There's a right hand and a left hook by Durant. And another big right hand by Durant. Barkley may not be seeing the right hand, and yes, Durant is nailing him with it. They want Barkley on the inside where he isn't going to be hit with that overhand right. Big right by Barkley. But again, the right by Barkley's in trouble. He's, He's down. down. Because he's shaking the cobwebs. Well, now it's up to Roberto Duran to have a good finishing round. And as we had mentioned, after the ninth round, if Duran won the last three rounds big, that he could get this fight. And again, the right hand bounces off Barkley's head. Remember, they told Barkley the longer the fight goes, the better it is for us. It hasn't worked out that way. Well, we noticed now, remember I mentioned, I said it looks like Roberto Duran got his third win. Where he got it from, and they just they just felt it for this round. That's the part he wants to win. He's landing right hands again. He hurt Barkley again. Now remember, even if he wins this round, there's no guarantee Duran will win a decision, but he'll be right there. Oh, he goes out there. Come on, look at it. Early, Barkley was very effective. Duran started to come back in the middle rounds, especially by the ninth. Combination by Duran, all three punches landed. What about the heart of Barkley, though, Gil? He oh, was so hurt here. Here both he is these, in the 12th. Both these guys have tremendous heart. This no may be in the balance with only a little more than 20 seconds left. Barkley with the jab, and that's his best punch right now because he's pushing the hook in the right hand. It'll end, and it will be a classic war. Big right hand by Duran. This has been extraordinary. Dave Brown scores the bout. 116 to 113 for Barkley. Iran Barkley, 116, 113. Giuseppe Ferrari scores it. 118, 112 for Duran. Oh, what a big display. Wow. Tommy Kazmarek scores it. 116 to 112 for the winner. And no! That tells you who's champion. Discrepancy on the scorecard. 118 112 for Duran is shocking, as is 116 112 for Duran. Huh? Well, apparently they were captured by Duran, Duran's ring generalship, the fact that he threw those flashy little combinations, and they forgot about uh, Barkley's work ethic.
It was a great fight, Iran. Your left hook was very effective. What happened in the last part of the fight that got you in trouble? Well, I felt I felt I was winning the fight. Um, Roberto, Roberto is a legend, you know, so quite naturally I could figure that they do that. But it was a good fight, you know, and the best man won. They, that's the way the judges called it. That's the way they see it. I got to take my hat off to the man. He's a good man. Strong, strong, very strong for me. You heavy. You guys like each other after all. Hey, you know, he's a tough man, you know. You got to like, you know. You You're seeing this, ladies and gentlemen, embrace by Roberto Duran and Iran Barkley. Like his friend, Davey Moore, Barkley was never the same after losing to Duran. Seven months later, he challenged Michael Nunn for the IBF middleweight belt. Barkley chased the slick Nunn for 12 rounds, winning over the crowd, but not the judges. After the loss, Barkley remained out of the sport for over a year as he underwent an operation for a torn retina. He had complained of a flashing in his eyes for the past two fights, and doctors were surprised that he hadn't already gone blind. Ballooning to over 215 pounds, Barkley shrunk back to the middleweight limit by August of 1990 when he took on the power-hitting Nigel Benn. Open glory, Ben. He, he really enjoyed that, sung by a couple of times. Well, Ben caught him with the very first shot, raised your right hand, and he staggered them already. Well, oh my God, he's done him on the ropes in the first minute. He's, gonna, he's having to pull him off, Padilla, and he's objecting to that, Ben. He's probably saying that you, you pushed him after you hit him. And now he's giving him the standing eight count. What a surprise. This fellow's been through this before, of course, got off the deck to defeat Tommy Holmes, but can he get over this one? This is a sensational start by the Dark Destroyer. Barkley is still badly stunned, Reg. He hasn't recovered from that. No defence. He's trying to fire back. Ben could, this could be all over in the first minute of the fight, Reg. And one of the odds layers made Ben their favourite in this city. They, did, they didn't allow uh, local prejudice at all with Barkley, who's a bit of a favourite. Oh, and now he's tagged Ben. It's got to happen in a, in a battle of punches. It's going to happen. One has to go. Well, he can't hang his chin up on a platter like that, Ben. That's dangerous. What a sensational start, did we? We always think we've seen it all, but we didn't envisage this, did we? Both the men so careless, Reg. And Nigel Ben really on top, and he's let Bartley right back into the action. Both men still badly shaken. But ben in trouble at the moment. coming in with Ben, they're really punishing, but it's a question now, who's, who's got the stronger chin, not only the chin, but the will by the look of it, Jim. Well, Ben's got his chin nice and low on the ropes there, Reg, where it should be, and his own shots are good. Ben must keep his chin just down that little bit lower. Remember that uh, Barkley took a pasting from Hearns and came back, but maybe those uh, days have caught up with him a bit, Jim. He's, he's got, oh, that shook him right to the boots, but Barkley there. He had to go down and he's... Well, he's caught him on the canvas here. There's a lot of objections from the crowd and booing. That's the second time Ben Strone punches him and Barkley's been in the floor. They're going to get disqualified here. I think it's unlikely they have the no-foul rule. It'll, it'll take the points away from him. What a round, he's done him again. Remember now, the three knockdown rule of WBO is in effect if he goes down once more in this round. No, he stopped it already. Carlos Padilla is saying this man can't go on. As a Barkley's manager complained to the commission about Ben hitting Barkley while he was down to no avail. Barkley had now suffered three defeats in a row. He took off another year before returning as a light heavyweight. He didn't lose any flair for the dramatic getting floored by club fighter Juan Hernandez before coming back to win a decision. Another victory got Barkley a title shot against IBF super middleweight champion Darren Van Horn. Barkley came into the fight as a 5-2 underdog, and his new manager, Ahmed Bey, said, quote, This is it. This cat got no more nine lives. Earlier today, he takes a left from Barkley. That got his attention. 
directly through a little left hook there. Van Horn on the jaw, and uh, his eyes rolled for a second, and that brought the crowd to its feet. Aaron Van Horn says, I can adjust. He knows Barkley's going to come at him. Iran Barkley can't waste time in this fight. Left hands. He's taking a lot of those left hands. He, he's, he's, he's jabbing. He's trying to jab, but he's dropping his right hand. He's holding the right hand very low. And he is down. On his back. He is up at six. He is up at the count of six. He is definitely shaken. Here's Barkley with a right and a left. Another right hand. Firing away. A good solid right, a solid left. Van Horn is going to go again. He's going to go down. And there he goes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, up at the count of six. Remember, no. Three, uh, no standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. Here's Barkley, left hand, left hand, three left hands. Bounding away, firing, sensing victory. Trying to come back, rejuvenate his career. Trying to take a world title. Bang it away, Van Horn taking some shots. Trying to fight back, and there he goes again. He's down for the third time. And it's stopped. It's all over. It's all over. I ran Barkley in a stunning right. Right. second round knockout. Takes the International okay. Boxing Federation world ball. title. Champion, how the heck did you look so darn good with Rid and let's face it, in the past couple of fights you've had? You know, not all that great looking. A lot of people wrote you off. You looked slow in a few of your fights, not so determined. Tonight, you came out like a man possessed and did everything beautifully. Well, first I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, you know, we worked hard. My trainer, Eddie Mustafa, we worked hard. And um, I paid the price. You know, I was willing to pay the price. And uh, that's what I did. You know, I worked hard. I don't think I would have let this guy beat me if I was drunk. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean it, you know, he was a good, I respected him as a champ, but, you know, I just had too much for him. Listen, there's nothing wrong with Darren Van Horn. He's a heck of a fighter on the table, like I'm sure you did. You beat a good fighter tonight, a champ of the world. Oh, most definitely I did, you know. I came to beat him, but now, you know, I want to move on. I want to move on. All right. I want a rematch with Tommy. You want me, baby? Come and get me. I want you. I want you. Now, now. now. I come and get me. I give it to you. I told you I'd let you fight. You're talking about Tommy Hearns, I take it. That's right. I'm talking about Tommy. He's the man now, but I want you. No, you the man. I'm the man. You the man. That's I what he meant. You. He meant you were the man, right? That's what That's he meant, right. all right? That's right. I mean I'm the man. Me and you, that great champ you are, we can get it on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on, Tommy. Don't, don't procrastinate. Let's go. Less than two months later, Barkley did get his rematch with Thomas Hearns. He floored Hearns in the fourth, then kept the fight at close quarters, outmuscling his opponent to earn his split decision and the WBA light heavyweight title. Barkley was now a three-division world champion, completing an improbable comeback. That was my greatest moment, Barkley later said. The fight with Hearns proved to be his last hurrah. Eleven months later, Barkley earned a career-high purse of $1 million against James Tony, who bloodied and stopped him in nine one-sided rounds. Barkley once again ballooned up in weight, weighing in at over 200 pounds in bouts against Dino Stewart and Adolfo Washington, who stopped him in six rounds. Barkley's promoter Top Rank Boxing dropped him from their stable after his weight ballooned out of control and his performances more than suggested that he was a shot fighter. But Barkley continued on, joining the Team Tulsa camp with Tommy Morrison. Only two years removed from earning a million dollars in a fight against James Tony, Barkley was now fighting in Oklahoma for $250. Barkley predicted he would once again fight for a title, a boast that fell on deaf ears until he got a shot against IBF light heavyweight titleist Henry Mosca in 1994. Now 34 years old, Barkley's eyes were once again cut to ribbons, receiving lacerations that required over 63 stitches to have his face put back together. Unable to control his weight, Barkley made the jump to the heavyweight division for good. He was suspended indefinitely in New York for neurological reasons 
and the director of the New Jersey Athletic Commission proclaimed him to be a danger to himself if he continued fighting. Barkley took his act on the road, fighting in places that didn't honor the suspension. He lost to kickboxers and wrestlers while also taking on former heavyweight champions who joined him on his senior tour. Barkley knocked out a 41-year-old Harry Cotsia, but lost to a 45-year-old Trevor Burbick. After suffering six consecutive defeats, Barkley retired in 1999 at the age of 39. He had returned home to the Bronx, to the same Patterson projects he grew up in. A weather-worn mural of him is displayed below the entrance, a poignant reminder of his own losing battle against the ravages of time. The millions he had earned in the ring were now gone. He bought investment properties in a car wash, all of which folded. There were luxury cars, lavish vacations, and two costly divorces, which drained all of his finances. I was hanging with Eddie Murphy in Arsenio Hall, Barkley said. I had to keep up. Barkley tried working. He had a brief stint as a used car salesman. He then volunteered as a boxing trainer. Nothing stuck, and by 2010, Barkley found himself homeless after a relative kicked him out of the housing project apartment they shared. I don't like to call it homeless, Barkley said. I like to call it down on my luck. A nonprofit organization called Bronx Works helped him get a disability check for the brain damage he suffered from boxing. They also found him a place to live. Barkley had a heart attack in 2013, and in October of the next year, he suffered a minor stroke. Since then, he has recuperated and continues to make personal appearances at local boxing events. I'm like a Timex, Barkley said. I take a licking and keep on ticking.